Our first question here that was developed by faculty, um, in an effort to reduce costs for summer school and provide more classes for students, CC CCFF has proposed to do away with the pro rata pay, a longstanding tradition at Cerritos College, for full-time faculty in return for a 7% increase to their base pay. What is your position on this matter? We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, before we begin and before I provide a response, I'd also, um, if I may, introduce to the audience uh, Tom Jackson, who's a member of the Board of Trustees in our audience, and Dr. Tina Cho. Uh, Sorry, for, no, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, thank you. And I'd like to thank the CCFF and the Associated Students of Cerritos College for hosting this forum. In response to your question, uh, I greatly appreciate the position that CCFF has proposed to the college regarding the elimination of pro rata pay for teaching the summer school classes. This is a huge, huge step forward in recognizing the California budget crisis that is affecting not only all of the community colleges up and down the state, but our CSU and UC systems as well. However, with that being said, without seeing the numbers on how a 7% increase to the base pay schedule for faculty would affect the overall budget picture, uh, I can't say at this time that I would be supportive of that particular proposal. But with that being said, uh, let me go on and say that I, I have been giving a lot of consideration, a lot of thought to the financial issues and the struggles that we are all facing. For example, I would strongly, strongly recommend that we evaluate the uh, development of the property historically known as the Strawberry Patch. Years ago, we contracted with uh, uh, the Cerritos, City of Cerritos Redevelopment Issue, and that's where Vintage of Cerritos comes from, and it's a revenue stream for the college. I would be strongly supportive of that as a revenue stream, a long-term revenue stream for the campus. In addition, it just doesn't seem right to me that we lease that property to a farmer for, to grow strawberries for a tune of about $28,000 a year. That's just not right. Additionally, I think that we could support the possibility of other items, such as the elimination of the lower step on the salary schedule and move up to perhaps a move up in step and column. I could also be supportive of compensation for our, our part-time faculty members uh, for payment of their office hours. Um, those are just some of the positions that I see that we can, as a member of the board and as part of this community college, address those issues in raising the salaries of our part-time and looking at alternative revenue streams as we move forward with this budget crisis. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arthur. Senator Zuniga? Yes. Go ahead. Uh, good, good, uh, I guess it's good. Good morning, everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to come up here and let you know a little bit about my views in regards to the issues that are at hand. First of all, if we want to abide by our mission, we <clears throat> need top-notch quality instructors. Therefore, I strongly support the proposal. For example, my wife holds a master's degree with credentials, had been in elementary school, same school for 21 years, same classroom. And there have been many days and hours that I have put in just to assist her as a result of reducing assistance in her classroom. Therefore, I understand what top-notch quality instructors are, and in some cases, underappreciated by their superiors. I strongly believe if we want to keep our top quality instructors, we need to support the proposal strongly. We need to support to continue the excellent reputation of our courses and programs that we have here at Cerritos Community College. In the hopes 
that the $350 million bond for CC passes. If not, then we need to find the money in other places. My understanding of shared sacrifice is basically find a way of equally splitting. I recommend that a committee be formed among faculty, preferably one from each department to come up with suggestions that are reasonable sacrifices. First of all, rec first of all, our faculty are very important and very valuable to Cerritos. Next question. Okay. We want to let our staff know that we are going to ensure that they are going to be listened to. We are going to listen and find out what is very important from them, recognize what's valuable to them, and form a research committee to present to the Board of Trustees suggestions in positive, open, fair, and most of all, constructive manner and ask the board to consider how can we fulfill the recommendation in a positive, creative... Mr. Moderator, with all due respect, yeah. my challenger's time expired well over 90 seconds ago. So this is inappropriate. Well, well, let's move on then. Let's address the question. If we can reset the time there, please. Let's just go ahead and formally address the second question here. I, I appreciate that, Mr. Arthur. Before we move on, I'd like to acknowledge uh, Mr. Hewlett that's in our audience and, and Bob Chester. Um, our Senate President here, Mr. Hewlett, is one of our trustees. Um, let's move on with the second question. I apologize for that, Mr. Arthur here. That's quite um, all right. Let, let's move on with the second question here. This is a two-part question. In these economic times, there's a public call for shared sacrifice. How would you implement this? And B, how will you boost the morale of our part-time faculty who teach a significant portion of our students, yet earn one of the lowest pay scales in the state, who are not compensated for office hours, and who have neither, neither benefits nor security, or job security. Go ahead, Mr. Arthur. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> before I respond to the question, I'd like to take an opportunity to respond to Mr. Zuniga's comments. Uh, he mentioned about establishing of a committee to, to investigate additional uh, potential revenue streams for the college. You all know, as well as I do, that these committees already exist. Uh, there's nothing that Mr. Zuniga has said that is, uh, in my opinion, new, are creative, are inventive. Uh, Mr. Zuniga, unfortunately, I don't think is qualified. But in response to the question, I would request, personally, I would request that Dr. Lacey provide the Board of Trustees with a spreadsheet or a chart of how the effects of a shared sacrifice would have on each and every one of the constituency groups here on campus. If the hit wasn't equal or fair across the board, I would have great difficulty in supporting whatever plan was brought forward. With regards to a morale issue, as I have mentioned in my response to the last question, I am supportive of paid office hours for our uh, part-time faculty, and I'm willing to listen to any additional uh, proposals that are presented at the negotiating table. Uh, however, we can better compensate, and, and, and any of these issues, on however we can compensate our full-time and part-time uh, faculty. Uh, as you know, we have, years ago, three years ago, we offered an early retirement package to our faculty and staff. It was very well supported. We had close to 80 individuals that participated. As a potential revenue stream, again, we are considering offering another early retirement package that will open up a number of opportunities for cost savings as well as opportunities for employment of some part-time instructors to move into the position of full-time positions. Uh, I believe that the presentations that have been presented by the Vice President of Business Services to each and every one of the constituency groups regarding the budget crisis facing this college have been open, honest, and have received well. And I am one that would be supportive of listening to each and every group on campus for whatever potential solutions anyone could bring forward that could address and alleviate the potential problems that are facing this campus. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arthur. Um, 
in terms of looking at time, do you want to go ahead and respond to the second part of that question as you started off with the question? Uh, sure, yes, I did. Um, I'm not going to respond to any negativism, first of all, by my opponent. So I'll try to be as positive pos as possible. Um, I, I did start off the second question. Would you like me to start over again so they got a complete? You're going to run out of time here, so go ahead. We, we have two minutes there. Go ahead. Okay. My understanding of shared sacrifice basically is to find a way of equal splitting. I'd recommend that a committee be formed among faculty, preferably one from each department to come up with suggestions that are reasonably sacrifices. First of all, recognize our faculty are very important and valuable to the Cerritos Community College. Number one, ensure they are being listened to. We're now referring to our faculty, ensure that they are being listened to, and I'm going to emphasize that what they say is very important. Three, recognize that they are valuable individuals, and four, form a research committee to present to the Board of Trustees suggestions in a positive, open, fair, and most of all, constructive manner and ask the board to consider how we can fulfill their recommendations. The next one would be positive, creative fundraising events to increase profits. Again, forming committees to gather students' openness and allow them to be open allow the Board of Trustees to listen to their opinions, their wants, their needs, then present it to the Board of Trustees for their suggestions and recommendations. Okay, thank you. We're, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next question here. So as we go on, these are gonna be um, questions that were created by the students, by SCC. Um, Mr. Arthur, Students are concerned about increasing unit costs, rising book prices, and fewer classes offered by the college. What is your plan to reduce costs directed towards students? It's a very good question. And my first thought comes to mind that uh, we recently had to settle a frivolous lawsuit that cost the college approximately $350,000. Mr. Zuniga is one of the ones responsible for that. Unfortunately, the cost to our students for tuition in textbooks is not in the control of the Board of Trustees. They are dedicated, they are, those fees are dictated by the officials in Sacramento, not the local governments. Uh, additionally, the cost of books, we have no control over that, that's the publishers. But I am proud of the work that the college has done regarding to uh, open and online registration, revisions to the policy regarding priority registration, as well as the so that those policies could be equal and fair to all students that are attending the college. I'm also very pleased, as each of our students will know, about the Kaleidoscope program that is implemented here on campus, where books are available online, free to our students in certain disciplines. And I, I speaking for the rest of the members of the Board of Trustees, strongly support and envision those opportunities of online books available to each and every student in each and every discipline, in each and every category, regardless of whether that student is moving forward to an AA degree and a transfer to a four-year institution, our work are towards a certificate to increase their working abilities and, and pay scales at their, at their current levels of employment. Uh, those are the types of things that I envision for the future. That the day-to-day -day routine things as a member of the Board of Trustees, are the bills going to get paid? Are the trees going to get trimmed? Is the campus going to be clean? Yes. It's the long-term adventures that we all face that keep me up at night, whether or not I have made the right decision. And in the terms, the times that I have spent on the Board of Trustees, I'm very proud of the way this college and this Board of Trustees have moved forward. I would challenge my opponent to name one instance where anything the Board of Trustees has done that has negatively affected this institution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arthur. 
Um, Mr. Zuniga, you can go ahead and respond as well. Yes. Um, I'm not going to ask you to answer to your question that you just proposed. However, I do want to get to the $500,000 that you indicated. First of all, as many of you know, the reason why we're actually here is because of the uh, California Voting Rights Act of 2002. That was an act that was instituted in 2003. So we're talking about almost nine years later. You would not have had to pay one penny. And secondly, our constitutional attorneys only charge 55000 so I don't know where you got the 500000 But I will go on to my question. Uh, the question was, First of all, to reduce costs directed towards students. I like to research book prices among various community colleges. Second, unit costs. Third, classes offered in general. Research book prices with the, like I said, with the local community college, consult with other community colleges to find out how they are, what system they are using and how much their books are and if they're less, then why? I, research is important here. It appears that there's no communication previously. Second, one suggestion is, is to research if we can find a way of streamlining, finding money from other budgets, other areas. Of course, abiding by the guidelines. And look into the student fees to see if there are any unnecessary extra fees that are added to it, attached to it, that can be reduced or eliminated. In addition, positive, creative fundraising events to increase the profits that could, that could create a slush fund if legal. Okay, Mr. Zuniga, I'm sorry, that is time. Thank you. We want to go ahead and move on to the next question posed by students. Um, question B here, it's a little bit lengthy here, bear with us. A vast majority of students at Cerritos College lack basic skills and need academic guidance. Traditional classroom instruction as opposed to computer-aided instruction, at the same time, in this physical crisis, an increasing number of students are unable to transfer to a four-year university due to the section cuts, due to section cuts. How do you ensure an open access community college stay true to its mission? Mr. Arthur? Thank you. Uh, I just want to make one perfectly clear. The figure that I raised to Mr. Zuniga in that lawsuit was $350,000, not a half a million. And that cost included not only settlement to the attorneys, but the cost for the college to defend itself in its payment to its attorneys, as well as all the staff time involved, something that Mr. Zuniga obviously doesn't understand. The Math 20 program here at Sredox College is a very good example of the aid students, that aid students who require remedial work uh, in their studies. I have requested Dr. Lacey to work with the faculty and other outside sources to develop other similar programs in the reading and science areas so that students can be ready to do college work. How important is that? We know that approximately 80 to 85 percent of the students enrolling in Cerritos College need remedial work in reading, writing, and science. That's just sad. The college has been working with our K-12 partnerships and meeting with them, the trustees and the superintendents, uh, quarterly every year. Our president's council and superintendent's council work with the, the administrations of our feeder schools in moving forward towards uh, having the students that come to Cerritos College better prepared and able to do college work. This is not something new. This is something that I take pride in what this college has done to move our students forward. I'm encouraged by the students that I have encouraged students over the past years when it comes to uh, the opportunities of her transfer in, in suggesting that they look at those private institutions, for example, Northwood University right here on campus. 
where the students can attend three years at Cerritos College and enroll in Northridge University for their bachelor's degree in business. I mean, this is a terrific program. Additionally, I wanted to bring up just the one item of our AOC, that's the Assessment Orientation Council. That is, this is a program that has proven to be working, and it assists those students that need that remedial work to be able to get into those classes that within a couple of semesters, after finishing that work, they will be prepared and are prepared in order to do college work. I'm very strong and very supportive of all these programs and will continue to do so. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Arthur. Mr. Zinniga? Yeah. Go ahead. Um, just one rebuttal from my thought I wouldn't have to. But um, what he failed to mention was that there would have been no cost, zero, if this act had been the way it was supposed to be carried out in 2003. No, that's just not true. You, you can't sit there, Leonard, and say that. That's just not true. We settled this before you brought this. You're just giving this we, we have time allotted for you. Go ahead and respond. Thank you. Oh, okay. And, and uh, oh, yeah, okay, great. Uh, first of all, I'd like to ensure that we have core classes here. These core classes are the classes that are going to make our students more competitive for the job market. I worked for the Employment Development Department, dealed with several, several young adults, adults, seniors, that are having difficult time getting work because of lack of education. Education has been love for me since the age of 12. And secondly, it's very important that we have good staff. And in order to keep our good staff, we need to make sure that we could maintain their salary and find ways to find it, regardless of the budget. In addition, I'm sorry, in addition, students will be more competitive in the economy and increase graduation rate and transferring to four-year university. And we need to help those who need financial assistance to accomplish their goals. Student learning is a paramount destination to community college. It helped me. I went for my bachelor's. I put one year in my master program of a four year of a three year master program at Cal State Long Beach. I put one year, completed one year, going on, on two years of law school at the Pacific Coast University of Law. I feel I'm a little bit qualified. However, we all have to work together. However, we do not need to realize that we can't do it. We need to come. Mr. Zeniga, excuse me, that's time. At, at this point, in the time that we have designated for this session here, we've got about three minutes here. We're going to open this up for question and answer. So if there's anybody in the audience that wants to pose a question to either candidate, we have a microphone that Mr. Solomon Namal is going to walk by so we can go ahead and amplify your question. So if there's any questions in the room, we'd be happy to go ahead and walk the mic over to you. Any questions in the room? Any questions? This is your opportunity here. The young man in the red shirt there.
Go ahead, Mr. Arthur. Thank you. Excellent question. Um, as I had mentioned in one of the responses to the previous question submitted by the students about the uh, uh, programs that the uh, Cerritos College has in place for the uh, uh, students that come to the college that need more preparation in order to do college level work. I agree wholeheartedly with what you're saying. And the college has proposed and is currently working with our K-12 partner groups so that at an earlier age, students understand the fact of what learning needs to be and that they offer classes to students on how to learn, similar to what we do here at Cerritos College, where students finishing that two semester program are capable of doing college level work. And I think with our, the work of our faculty, as well as what uh, we propose to the K-12 partners, the answer to your question will be right there. That intimidated student will be no longer. Thank you. First of all, I'm going to say it's very difficult to, to look at a person and say, hey, this person's not college ready. He's not college material. He's not college goal oriented. That's going to be difficult. I'm going to be upfront with you. Secondly, half of your stories sound like my life. 12 years old, I knew education was my love. Homework assignments. Ask your mother, what are you going to be doing after college or after, after high school? She says, you'll be working full time, of course, to help support the family. College was out of the question. So what I did was I joined the military. I did my four years, but when I joined the military, I started college courses. Once I got to my duty station, I started college courses at 17. Mr. Zuniga, I am sorry to say that that unfortunately is all the time that we have for this session here, for the first um, portion of this presentation today. So today we're looking at the trustee area number one, which was Leonard Zuniga and Robert Arthur, who is our board of trustee. Um, I wanna thank both of you on behalf of CCFF and ASCC for participating in our program this morning. I have to say that thank it's a you. learning curve, but thank you so much.